welcome to another session video. Today I have travelled over the Pennines to a reservoir that I've never seen before. This is Fleetwood Reservoir. I'm going to be fishing a method feeder, I'm going to be fishing a cage feeder, I'm also going to be pinging pellets for some cruising carp. I don't know if you'll catch any but I've been told that there are lots of bream in here as well. I can't wait to get started, I've never seen this venue before in my life so I'm going to take you down to the peg, show you the approach and talk you through the tackle. Well, as you can see over my shoulder, it's flat calm. There's very little wind, but this is quite a sheltered reservoir. There are fish cruising around out there. I'm expecting those to be carp. There are one or two ghosties cruising through as well. But like I said, there are lots of bream in here, and that's why I'm going to be fishing two or three different ways today. It's going to be a very interesting session. It's about nine feet deep um, at the deepest point in here. So as you can imagine, at this time of year, it's still warm. You could probably tell by the way I'm, I'm dressed. It's very warm. It's still summer. There are fish cruising around, and I fully expect them to be up in the water. So as you can see over my shoulder, there is a floating island there. And that is about, I'd say that's about 30 to 35 meters away but it is floating so whilst it is a feature it's nine feet off the bottom so whether that's going to hold any fish I don't know certainly in the middle part of the day when you know the sun is at its hottest or its highest there could be fish in the shade underneath that island I don't know but that's what we're going to find out so I'm going to talk you through the rigs I'll talk you through the approach and I'll show you the bait tray Well, lots of people always ask about the setup and the just kind of kit that I've got set up for a session like this. So I'm just going to take a few seconds out to give you a quick tour of the setup. I'm obviously on the XR36 seat box. Lovely platforms here at this fishery, as you can see. So there's no need to get in the water or anything like that. Lovely and comfortable. I've got three rods set up. These are on the, on the roost here. Okay, I'll talk you through those setups in a moment in more detail. I've got two nets in, one for silvers, one for any carp that we might catch as well. I've got the new feeder rest there we go which is great for when you method feeder fishing just stops the rod going in on the side tray it's all very kind of commercial orientated today obviously i've had a little bit of information from the lads that run the fishing club here so that is basically water <laughs> i always like to have some water on the side tray for washing your hands adding to your ground bait or pellets or whatever i've got some ground bait like i said i've been told there are bream in here this is sono match method dark that's all that is on its own i've got some corn mainstay of commercial fisheries i've got some eight mil coppins here pellets there for pinging so i'm going to be pinging those i've got some micro pellets these are ringers these are ringers um, micro pellets the method micro pellets they've just dried out a little bit so i'll be adding a little bit of water to those that's for the feeder i'll be adding a little bit of goo or some boiler crush or something like that to those and then this mix here is a mix of four mil pellets and micro pellets okay and that is what i'm going to use to target the bream we know on fisheries they love micro pellets so i'm going to be feeding those on a shorter line obviously on the bottom with a cage feeder and i'm going to be capping that off with the ground bait and hopefully we're going to catch a, uh, a number of bream on that a little bit later on when they're settled and then in here i've just got the usual hook baits okay some all sorts there wafters some mini uh, mini all sorts there as well and a selection of hard pellets so i can put them on a band if if need be and then spare hook lens we don't know what we're going to be catching on today if anything and i've got a lovely 20 gram cage feeder there that i'm going to be using to tackle those bream on that shorter line so that's the setup i'm just going to talk you through the uh, the rigs and stuff now so you can see how i'm going to tackle it Well, like I say, this is a new reservoir to me. I've never seen it before, and it's absolutely stunning, especially in the sunshine. We've got the gulls flying overhead as well. It's a little bit of a different kind of venue, this one. It's a little bit of a different reservoir, and I can see it's got a bit of a history to it. So who better to give us a little bit of information about what the reservoir is all about and how it came about than the club president, Alan. Good morning, Alan. How are you? Good morning, Jamie. Yeah, Good. I'm fine, mate. Fine. What's, you know, what's this reservoir all about? What's, uh, what's well, its history? The reservoir started, it was just a, a watering hole for the uh, LMR Railway Company 
that used to run the trains into and out of Fleetwood for the docks and stuff. Right. And across the road where Fisherman's Friend are now, which everybody will know Fisherman's yep. Friend, uh, the workers out of the place uh, decided to get an angling club going in 1949 and it's gone on since then. But uh, over the last 25, 30 years, we've put a lot of work into the place and it's turned out like it is now and it's a lovely place a very very hard place to fish <laughs> which jamie will find out today yeah we like a challenge don't we <laughs> yeah but uh i'm sure he'll catch a few and uh you know it's just a lovely place to fish it looks a great setup you know and i know you've got a strong uh, membership base behind um this this water and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little while i can't wait to get on the box thanks very much for the invite alan i can't wait to get going so i'm going to hopefully catch a few fish for you and we'll catch up with alan in a little while that I've got is the method feeder okay so it's only about 30 to 35 meters wide out there so an 11 foot rod is perfect or 10 foot 10 this is the excess slim okay so I've got six pound horizon um, horizon mainline on there and that's on a 3,000 reel 3,000 reel on an 11 foot rod or 10 foot rod is balanced absolutely beautifully okay i've got a one and a half ounce tip in that i'm going to be fishing with this anyway so the fish are going to be self-hooking so i'm fishing it i'm going to kick off with an open method feeder as you can see 20 gram like i say it's about nine feet deep out there so the reason why i'm not fishing a normal method feeder is because in that slightly deeper water i like to have something with an edge on it or a side on it that just just going to protect those pellets or the ground bait or whatever it is i end up using just to protect it until to make sure it's going to be intact when it gets down to the bottom okay a pellet feeder could also do the same job but i just think this is more suited because fish can get to it from every angle whereas with a pellet feeder they can only get to it from one way so i'm just going to kick off with that it's free running okay and that's just with a quick change um, a quick change attachment on the bottom so I can change my hook lens nice and quickly and easily okay so that's what I'm going to kick off with I'm going to be casting that across to the island I'm going to start about two meters off that island there's a carp there just cruising through now um, so I'm going to kick off with that okay now the other approach I'm going to be fishing and I'm going to be putting into play a little bit later is the cage feeder line okay so again I've got exactly the same setup all right so it's the excess slim 10 foot 10 3000 six pound horizon main line and what i've got on here is just a free running um quick change swivel there but it's the feeder bead one so it's it's a quick change swivel but it's 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 actually built into a bead which i think are great just nice and durable so that's free running and i've got that running to a rubber stop there which just stops the feeder i put a knot in the line there as you can see that just stops that going over that and then below that about 10 centimeters below that i've got the length of the main line there and then a loop and that's where i'll attach my hook length a really nice super super simple free running rig and i'm going to be putting that in at about 10 to 12 meters out okay i'm going to build that line up with a bed of those pellets and some corn as well i might see signs of fish there if they start fizzing as bream often do especially if the bottom is a little bit soft so that's what i'm going to be trying a little bit later on in the session and then just because of the conditions i've got a a pellet waggler rod set up okay so this is the um 11 foot carp waggler again six pound horizon main line with a 3000 reel beautifully balanced okay I'm not going to be casting too far with this just as far as i can ping those eight mil pellets to be honest slightly i'm probably going to go slightly to my left just because i don't want it to be banging line with my feeder line so i want to ping pellets slightly to my left um, and that is just simplicity in itself it's one of the pellet waggler attachments that you just slide onto your rig i can show you how flexible this is when i get fishing with it okay but you just slide these onto the line they come ready made like that you just slide them onto the line and that's as you'd expect got a quick change swivel on it their attachment so i can quickly and easily change the pellet waggler to to one that's suited to the conditions and that's it so i'm going to be feeding that line while i'm fishing the feeder keep pinging pellets see if there are any fish there have a cast with this but all the time i'm going to be putting some pellets a better pellet and corn in at 12 meters where hopefully we're going to have a run of bream as well with the cage feeder rig so i can't wait to get started so to kick off the swim i'm going to start pinging pellets like i said but i'm going to put a bed of pellets and corn on that shorter line okay so i'm going to put that in with the cage feeder but i'm going to try not to put them in 
all in the same place if that makes sense rather than put a large cage feeder on if you can hear the gulls over the top that's because about 500 yards that way are the sea docks that's how close we are to the coast that is why you're going to be hearing seagulls all day so i'm going to start pinging pellets like i say just as far as i can comfortably feed these eight mil coppings okay i'm not going right to the left even though there's no one at the next peg i'm just feeding that to my left just like you would in a match okay keep putting four or five pellets out there but then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to underarm some feed in with this four old cage feeder and all i'm doing is i'm going into that mix of the pellets that you saw and then just capping it off with ground bait so that there is going to be some ground bait there but not too much it's just mainly about the pellets but the ground bait is there because we are talking bream and i love to put a bit of ground bait in when we're after bream okay and all i'm going to do with this line is I'm just going to underarm it just slightly to the right, that's all. And this is going to be in the maximum depth, which is in about nine feet, nine feet of water. Okay. Like I say, if the if the the bottom is soft there, which I have seen one or two bubbles around as I walk around the reservoir this morning, there were one or two bubbles coming up. That may suggest that it's a soft, silty bottom. And if that's the case, then obviously we might see some blowing, some you know, some bubbles out there in a little while. So I'm going to put six of these in. And I'm just, I'm doing it to make sure that they're, you know, they're not all in the same spot. I'm not even clipped up, okay? I'm just gonna put them on an area because when you want a number of fish to be grazing over a bed of feed, you don't want it just in a tight area. You know, you want the fish to have a large enough area to graze on comfortably so that when you do go on it in a little while, in a, an hour or two, then hopefully there's gonna be some fish settled there. So these are the first three just with pellets and then the next three I'm going to do with with corning. Lovely bright visual bait and all fisheries are used to corn aren't they? So I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to keep pinging the pellets and then fire that open method feeder out there towards the island. So I've got a bit of the old uh, yellow glug that I'm gonna put on the pellets. No, I haven't got a name for this yet, but I'm still using it. <laughs> so that's gone on the pellets, just to give it a bit of extra. It's actually quite a sweet smell, so it's just adding a bit of sweetness to it. You can use your own pellets here. That's obviously why I'm using these ringer ones. So on lots of fisheries where um, it, you know it is fishery only pellets, then you might find that these, you know, adding glugs and things can just you know make your pellets stand out um, from the other fishery pellets. That's obviously not the case here, but I'm doing it just because I've got confidence in it. So I'm just kicking off. I'm going to kick off with a one of the mini wafters, one of the mini all sort wafters, just because it's less selective. Okay, if there are bream here, well there are bream here, you have more chance of catching a bream with a slightly smaller bait like that, or skimmers. So I'm just going to kick off with that towards the island. I'm not clipped up, okay, so I quite, you know, I'm quite happy to be quite mobile today. Um, it is summer, and we might have to chase fish around, and I'm not going to go right to the island, just short of it, to start with. And then obviously I can work my way across to that island as the session progresses if need to. So I've just let that fall straight down, okay. I'm gonna undo the drag because while I'm filming, my attentions might be elsewhere briefly. There we go, just in case we get a, any vicious pulls or takes, as some people call them. I'll just get that adjusted right. And I'm just gonna start on, you know, I'm gonna be quite active with this today. Like I say, it's about nine feet deep out there. So we might find that any fish that are out there are going to be up in the water. So there's every chance that they're going to be coming to the splash, to the, to the plop. And that might be how they follow the feeder down. Um, but we don't know. We'll find out. Like I said, I've never fished it before. I've never seen the place before. So it's going to be interesting to see what response we get from this. And I don't really know what the head of silvers is like. There might be lots of silvers out there, but I haven't brought any natural baits or silvers type baits. Obviously, it's all pellets and boilies and that sort of thing and corn so hopefully we'll not get the attention of those really small fish I've noticed more carp moving around in this open water down to my left initially 
I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's because it's more open water. I don't know. But it'll be interesting to see if that activity does move now that I'm starting to lose feed pellets. I haven't been feeding these pellets at all for this session. On one of the most recent sessions that I fished, I built it up for 20 minutes, half an hour before I went on it. But I'm just starting to feed now. And like I say, I'll be quite happy to build this up for an hour or so and just see what reaction we get. There's just a bit of a ripple on it now, which means I won't see any fizzing or anything like that on that short line, but I'd rather have a ripple on it than it'd be flat calm. I think that can only help. Sometimes when it's deeper, the line's going straight down. I've got the line quite slack anyway, so it is going down in, you know, a bit of an, like an arc almost. It's not tight to the feeder. Well, we've had to really chase them around today. It's been a bit of a test. As you can see, it's still bright sunshine. I've actually got on the cage ring now with a long tail and I've gone up to that very inviting floating island and we've got a fish. It's a small skimmer and all I've done is just switch to just ground bait just to give a bit of attraction just on a single piece of corn and there we go we're off the mark. <laughs> Still very lively. There we go. Lovely little skimmer. Instant bite as well as suspected so that long tail it's just trying to catch any fish that are up in the water on this glorious day. There are still fish cruising around and that's obviously what it is. It's nine feet deep out there. So, you know, we're going to expect that there's fish up in the water. But that's summer, summer fishing. So let's see if we can catch some more. I've just clipped up up to that island now. Little cage feeder. And we'll just see if we can get some more fish that are passing through. Well, I've just cast that in and it's it's gone round before it's even hit the bottom. I've got that little horizon feeder on. Like I say, a long tail. The feeder was still falling. It had only fallen probably two seconds. And it's gone round, I've got a fish. Let's net, oh, he's come off at the net. That looked like a rud, yep. a lovely little rud, which as we know, live up in the water. But that just shows you that, you know, the fish are up in the water. So I'm just gonna keep on that line now. Just try and build it up which is mainly ground bait. I'm just putting a piece of corn in each cast. Still got corn on the hook and just keep dropping it in. And just like we do when the, fi you know, the fish are up in the water, just stay nice and active and try getting to, to follow the feeder down. Well, we've just gone back in and it took, it's taken four or five casts to be fair to that same spot cast before this I was casting a little um, little square feeder over there and it's not designed for that at that range anyway so I did that and I had a bit of a I think it was a carp that hit it as it was going down like we said with Fisher up in the water I've just gone back out again just switched the feeder to a little horizon feeder only 20 grammer and straight away on the drop it's gone round and believe it or not it's a bream who says there are only carp up in the water. There we go, lovely fish. Single grain of corn, just air rigged, size 14. Brilliant, and that was straight away that. So again, we talk about fish coming to the plop, homing in on the feeder. If they're not coming to the feeder, any sort of a longer tail. This is, I think it's 15 inch, this um, tail that I've got on here. Immaculate fish, absolutely perfect. As you can see, just in the corner of its mouth there, single grain of corn. He's having a good kick back at me, there we go. Just pop that up there. Let's have a look at him. Absolutely gorgeous condition. Look at the condition of that. Fantastic fish. We know they're up in the water. I've just got to keep trying picking them off for now. We've got that area fed here, where we put a bed of bait down, where hopefully some fish are going to settle. But until then, it's still really warm at the minute, you know, we can see the fish cruising around so I'm going to keep on that line right underneath that island pick off whatever we can and then I'm going to come short and see if we can catch on this short line well I've just got on that short line and I've got to admit I've been on it twice and I've not had an indication whatsoever however I've just gone on it now for a third time and really left it late on in the session I've been chasing carp on the pellet waggler and they just don't want to play ball today but it's absolutely solid with carp out there. I've gone on the short line, this one went on a little bit of a run when I hooked it. 
but there we go the sun's just come out as well so you can probably see it it's a lovely bream it's just on an orange wafter there we go beautiful fish i can see how this rack the weights up on here with the fish that size good condition again this one there we go lovely orange hook bait there still a few pellets in there that was only in there 30 seconds still a few of the pellets left in that's how quick that went and it nailed it it's in the bottom lip stunning fish especially uh, now the sun's out let's hold him up for you this has really been a short session today <laughs> it's been a short session like i say but it's been a, a really enjoyable session beautiful fish it's absolutely solid with carp out there but they're not feeding at the moment but i've got a long drive back to sheffield but it looks like those fish are rocked up on that short line which has been great but that's why we feed it for later on this session you know when the fish are up in the water when it's hot when it's warm we know they're up in the water and it can be the latter stages when they go down and get their heads down so great fish that one i want to see if there's any more out there Right, well, it's been a cracking session. Really enjoyed it. The weather's been great. Thanks again for the invite, Alan. Really appreciate it. If this is a venue you are interested in, Alan is just going to quickly tell you how you can get the opportunity to come and fish this venue. Well, if you want to fish the venue, uh, it's a members only uh, venue, uh, and you can get information from the number below of Ant Friff, who is the club chairman, and uh, he will give you all the details of the club. Uh, apart from that, I can't tell you anymore. Uh, <laughs> just come and enjoy your fishing. Well, it's been a fantastic session. It's only been a short session. I'm going to put uh, these fish back now. It's a fantastic fishery. Just going to return this lovely fish. Off you go, mate. See you next time. It's been a great session. Like I say, it's nine foot deep water. It's the height of summer. We've had to chase fish up and down in the water, but it's been a really nice short session. It's a cracking place. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, just hit subscribe. And if you want to see more coaching tuition style videos, then check out Patreon TV just there. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.